he ventured on to the edge of his kingdom. There, he hoped to find answers. The great fire that gave life to her land was dying. Fishers had cracked open tunnels in the cliffs, and great jets of sulfur erupted from the ground. Yet she knew she could use these to her advantage. He still had time. He passed the gates of his kingdom and found new tunnels revealed by the melting of the ice. The glistening water of the cave ran down the walls like tears, as if weeping at the melting of his world. Both stepped on the bridge together, matching each other's steps. Ember met Rhyme. A shimmering barrier separated them. On either side of this barrier, each carried their world with them. Neither knew what world they had come to, yet clearly, someone had been here long ago. As they rode across the sky, the two caught sight of a great castle in the distance. And over it, a dark shape soared into the air and was gone. Perhaps there, at the castle, they would find answers to what threatened their worlds. Buoyed by Ember's warmth, they rose and descended when Rhyme's chill fell upon them. these tunnels, there was no sign. Only by working together were they able to move forward. The wreckage of great mechanisms, wheels, and pulleys lay along the path.
More structures lay ahead, forgotten in the overgrowth. Yet the road had been built with purpose in mind. They came upon a mine and saw what the mechanisms were for. The walls glittered, flecks in the rock shining like stars. It reminded them of the barrier between them and wondered if there was a connection. Great power lay in the veins of rock and someone had sought to claim it. And here they had failed. No matter whether touched by cold or warmth, they noticed the ore held its color. Finally, they emerged from the mine, and across the bridge ahead of them lay the great castle they had seen from the gondola. And so, side by side, but with a chasm between them, Ember and Rhyme came to the castle gate and opened it together. The castle, majestic from a distance, had fallen into ruin, its halls empty. Of the ruler, there was no sign. Ash blackened the stones from a fire long ago. A great door, inscribed on its surface, a golden sheaf of wheat. As the scarf was taken, the door became brighter. Whoever had once held these scarves, the doors had opened for them. Another world opened up before them, Fields of promise stretching as far as the eye could see. But the fields lay untended, the farmers gone.
The faded black scarf seemed a hint of royalty. And if it was like the first, it might open doors ahead. Sulfur split the ground here, fissures in the rock. The fissures seemed to be recent, angry, but Rhyme was able to calm it for a time. Working together, Ember moved up and over as Rhyme froze the steam from the vents so she could pass. They worked well together. Evidence of the world's past inhabitants was all around them. The sulfur vents ran hotter and fiercer beneath the surface. Mechanisms meant to harness the wind now lay exposed to it. Yet Ember and Rhyme did not dwell upon it. This barrier was nothing compared to what separated them.
the strange machines curled in and about themselves in ways that reminded them of the castle's twisting hallways. The same architect, perhaps. A great cliff rose up before them. It looked as if they could climb the exterior. Perhaps they could use it to scout the horizon. The intricacy of the mining platforms was awe-inspiring. Someone had obsessed over their construction, every moving part. Ember, for her part, was amazed at how Rhyme's presence quelled the vents so she could pass. And she was grateful.
The two had started to forget a time when they were apart, a time when they were alone. They came to a foundry, which looked intact. They crushed the ore. They both felt a powerful, dizzying rush come over them. The rush drove them onwards, and their spirits soared. They felt like they could do anything together. A great dredging machine looked built to sift ore from the bottom of the lake. Whoever had built these machines had sought the ore everywhere. What?